Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are when you're listening and or watching this particular broadcast. My name is Mark DuPont. I'm the Executive Director for the National Maritime Law Enforcement Academy, and we're picking up a conversation that we started earlier with Carl from Heffering Marine, talking specifically about the use of AI in boat operations. And now we're going to get actually into the meat of it. We're actually going to look at how the system works, how the intelligent maritime assistance system works. So with that said, and no further ado, we'll just jump right into it, Carl. I'll give you the floor and you can tell us and show us how this thing works. So here in front of you, you, you have the system. It's both on the operator side and then, then, uh, then on shore. Um, and for the operator, you have this interface that you see here on the left, where you're being shown the optimum speed, uh, now being shown as an eco speed, but just there previously as, a, as a, the safety speed, and then relative to the speed that you're actually doing. So you should always be able to match, and that becomes very visible with the colors, uh, match your speed with the actual speed. Uh, this is a video that just loops through. So uh, it's just showing here how you can also how you can also view it differently. So if you don't want to view the dials or the gauges, you can also set it up as tiles, which became important if you want to split screen. So if you want to split it down into half or you know split it down into quarters, it becomes easier to view the tiles because gauges sort of uh, shrink. Uh, well, it's a circle, so it just it's it it shrinks uh, uh, in a way that it becomes difficult to see you know, if the screen is too small. But here you're seeing your actual, coming back to the safety speed here, you're seeing your, your optimum safety speed here on the bottom and your actual speed. If you cross into red, you've gone too far. Your actual impacts here on the, on the left-hand side, uh, your maximum impact that you've incurred and the number of impacts that have exceeded a threshold. Now we've just jumped over into the eco speed, which is the other model optimizing for fuel efficiency. So showing it in the exact same way, but now using another model where you are, we are figuring out what is your optimum speed right now with regards to fuel consumption. And then also showing, which now sits here, what is your expected fuel reduction here for this demo being 12%? And what can you expect to add in time, uh, given that you follow this, this, uh, this speed optimization? Um, and both in the eco and in the, in, the, in the safety speed, you still see that view of, of uh, your, your impacts. Uh, then you have something called safety quality on the safety speed, which is an indicator of how well you've done matching your actual speed with the, with the optimized um, recommended speed. So you have that indicator here on the right hand side. Uh, and that could be something that a fleet manager could set as a standard. We always want to be above 80% and it becomes very visual to the operator uh, how they stand or how they're doing in a particular trip. Uh, and the same on the fuel quality side. So they're obviously focusing on how well are we doing meeting our targets with regards to uh, with regards to fuel consumption. So screen on board is intended to be simple. Like it's it's meant to be simple and just the information you need, because all the other information is still available uh, for viewing in the in the IMAS console, which you see on the right hand side. Uh, and I'll jump over to that. But maybe lastly mention that this would be shown on your plotter on board or on your, or on your, navigation, uh, on your navigation system, uh, including if you have any of these Raymarine, Garmin, or Simrad, it would be compatible um, as an app, essentially, with, with those systems. Uh, let me change my sharing and share another screen now. So now you should be seeing uh, the IMAS console. Uh, so here in this in this demo environment, I have uh, I have these three boats They're located in these uh, scattered around these islands here in, in Norway. And I can click on this boat and I can see uh, see key information about it uh, from the weather sensor from from the different engine uh, two different engines that it has. I can also click on here and go into uh, details about this vessel. Uh, if I want to drill into more information, because this vessel right now is not in operation, there's it's not an actual live trip. So I just want to see what was the latest status. 
But I can also go into statistics for this boat uh, to see its operating history. So we have here a ranking for how it's performed over all of its trips. Trip score of 85 out of 100 is, is quite good. Impact frequency telling me how often do you get an impact above the threshold, which in the system is, is default uh, 3G. So uh, that is a, a limit that we have seen where people start to feel uncomfortable. Not necessarily dangerous, but uncomfortable. Uh, then you have your peak impact recorded in, in this vessel. So what's the highest impact that's been recorded? Uh, guidance tracking is an indicator of how far have you, how closely have you tracked the, the optimum guidance speed uh, without going too far below it. Uh, safety quality uh, is an indicator of how much have you spent of your time above the safety speed um, or an inverse of that. So if you have a 92% ranking like here, then most of your time you spent on or just below it. And fuel quality is a similar indicator, but relative to the fuel consumption speed. Metrics on your, on your duration, your fuel consumption, and then you have the operating history uh, of the vessel displayed graphically uh, for impacts, speed, quality tracking, and that will be based on those indicators, like I mentioned above, for example, visualizing safety quality over time, where you can then sort of dive into a specific uh, sp specific time period. So I would like to just see this particular time period here, which was September last year and how that trended. Fuel consumption, uh, distance, and here we can add more charts. So we can add more data that you might want to see. Uh, every trip for this boat is logged. So every trip that it's ever done is logged automatically in here. Uh, any alerts that have come up in this vessel. So here, I'll show you alerts a little bit better, uh, a little bit later. Uh, but if any alerts come up, being engine alerts or anything else, any alert that you've created, they'll pop up here. And then you have the specifications and you can download a specific trip or you know the raw data for this or a specific uh, report in a CSV. So for example, RPM step sizes, I wanna see RPM step sizes in, in steps of 500. And I can download that and I have that analysis. Uh, if I go into trips here, and then let's just pick something at, at random here, uh, an hour trip where peak impact was about 1.1, so pretty calm trip. I can see a similar, uh, I can see a similar type of profile for the trip as I did for the vessel. The score, particularly for this trip, uh, fuel uh, fuel consumption for this trip, CO2 emissions average speed, uh, what the speed was. And here I can see the actual speed relative to the, to the calculated speed, where the calculated speed is the red line. So you can see here the operator pretty much followed the recommended speed almost exactly. Dropping here, this is where they must have stopped at some point, in which case the, the recommended speed just sits at around 10 knots. Just you're safe to go up to 10 knots whenever you decide to take off again. Uh, the impacts incurred on this trip, so they had one impact here that was above, above 1G. Fuel consumption on this trip, engine information, uh, and weather here for this particular vessel showing wind speed. And I'd like to see this trip on the, on the map. So then I can go here and see where it took off from and, and where it went, where that impact happened, which was just here, and then break that particular minute down into second by second. So I can see that it happened exactly here uh, on this particular second in this trip. So if anything were to actually have gone wrong, you can then lay your other data into this as well. You know what speed the, the vessel was doing. You, you know what the conditions were. You can check out the weather uh, in, the, in the system here. Uh, or if you'd like to see other information at the same time. So this was well, it's not a big impact anyway, so uh, not a not a not a uh, nothing to be worried about. But it gives an idea of how you can drill down into into this level of detail. Uh, and I'd like to see more details about this trip. I'd like to go into statistics, uh, which are available here. 
status of the vessel, which is available here for this trip. Uh, I'd like to see how much of the trip was spent on or above the, uh, the recommended speed. So the blue line here indicates that they were operating at the recommended allowable speed, but in these red sections, they exceeded it. So if I go back to the full trip, I can see that that happened, that happened just around this area here, which can, is confirmed in the chart uh, as, they, as they took off and, and exceeded that speed a little bit. Uh, coming back into, into the vessel and, and trip information, I can then go and have a look at the operator. And the operator will also have his own, his own profile. And it's all laid, set up in the same way. So similar to the, the, the trip and the uh, vessel profiles. So everything is always very familiar. It's always set up in the same, with the same logic. And that captain has a, a uh, accumulated trip score. Um, safety quality that, that, uh, that he's accumulated over time. And you see the operating history of this captain. Uh, so this would be back in February here, for example, this, uh, these, uh, yeah, this is February. So this would be explained by, for example, weather uh, and seasonal changes. Uh, but then you can compare that to what was the actual speed being done. Uh, so speed, average speed, speeds around this time were roughly the same as they were during the summer. So maybe that's something to, uh, to look out for. Maybe there's a scope for following the optimum speed better during, during winter times. And these these sort of uh, these sort of uh, charts here can be can be set up as as uh, each fleet wants to see it, what information they want to see. Uh, and you'll have your oh, forgot one thing here. Let me jump back in. So every captain will have their own uh, rank. This is what we discussed earlier. Uh, where you start as a trainee, and if you if you perform poorly the entire time, you're going to stay a trainee. Uh, but the better you do, the higher trip scores, the more you build yourself up in these rank points. The well, ultimately, you want to get to a legend. Everybody wants to become a legend. Uh, so that's the that's the goal. And you can see how you progress, how you're progressing uh, toward that goal, uh, with regards to how you how you perform. Uh, jumping back to this, you then have a dashboard for your fleet. So this is just the overall uh, aggregate data that, that you can view for your fleet overall over the last seven days, last 30 days, the last 90 days. And this is something that we'll be actually rolling out a new version of uh, uh, next quarter, making a more powerful reporting tool out of this. So from here, you'll also be able to Perform any reporting that you may need to do, uh, whether it be focused on fuel consumption or focused on, on the safety angle. All of that information should be able to come from here uh, and be easily shareable with whoever, whomever needs to see it on a fleet-wide level. And then you can jump over into rules. So here you can create any type of rule uh, that you might want to see. So. I would like to, well, you can essentially create a rule around anything that we are getting information from your vessel about. Uh, engine oil pressure, fuel rate, what have you. Uh, let's just do something simple and let's say impact. So if a wave impact is over 3G uh, on this particular vessel, and I can define an area for this. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say in general. Then let me know. And I would like to be in. I would like to be informed about that in an email. So if a rule violation happens, and this was a rule, and if that rule is violated, I'd like to be informed in an email and in an SMS. Then you can also have a NMEA 2000 warning. So anything we're pulling from, uh, any information we are pulling from the uh, the engines themselves, oh, there are no alerts here. Any information that we're pulling from the engines themselves uh, will, be, will be delivered to, so none of these demo vessels have any, uh, have any alerts, which is good. 
But if there would be any alerts, uh, transmission oil pressure alert, for instance, because we just talked about that, then that'll pop up in your interface here. And you can also have that delivered to you in an SMS or, or email. So you can get that information immediately and do something about it. Uh, that was one thing that came up. Uh, I came up uh, during the me a meeting I had earlier today uh, with a customer where they had multiple engine alerts come up last year, which allowed them to uh, which allowed them to react quickly enough to save one of their engines uh, because the fleet manager got that alert sent to him directly uh, and therefore it didn't get missed. It wasn't a noise in the engine that the operator heard but then forgot to tell anybody about. It was something that was just immediately in your phone, know about it, do something about it, make sure that engine doesn't, doesn't go out. So... With this toolbox, you can uh, you can set up you can set up whatever criteria is important to you. And if I'd like to uh, let's go out here back to where my boats are, I'd like to define this here area. G one, and I want to say that if uh, if anybody operates over 20 knots on any vessel, so I pick no vessel, in G1, then let me know. Because G1 is a sensitive area and I don't want anybody going faster than 20 knots there. Uh, and you can also define that to be if anybody's operating at that speed or gets an impact outside of G1, then also let me know. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you can build that up. So that's, uh, that's an insight into, into what the system looks like uh, uh, on the monitoring side. Any active trip will pop up here if there was one going on at the moment. If you pin trips, they'll pop up here. So I can go pin a few trips like that, go back to the map. And I'd like to view these trips here. So you can see that this was a slightly faster trip than the one that I saw before, but well, it's a really sheltered area. So, so no aggressive impact here. Uh, jump out of this and go into another trip. So it's compared with something else. Slightly longer trip. And you can pin as many trips as you want there. If you want to go back in time, compare and, and, and contrast trips. And any, any of your latest trips will pop up here. So you don't need to go back into the, uh, into the list here. You'll see all the latest trips here. Then there are upcoming features. Um, there will be a, a revamp of the, of, the, of the rule system, uh, which is adding more operations, for example, being able to combine rules if RPM is exceeds X and Oil temperature also exceeds X, then let me know um, so that those two are an indicator of something happening, um, as well as uh, uh, reporting. So the dashboard will come to, uh, come to be updated fairly soon with, uh, with some uh, new and exciting updates and new data. Uh, and then continuously, about every two weeks or so, we push out new updates to this that, uh, that make this more alive and more capable to deliver you with the data that you need. So there's a lot of stuff there, Carl, and I'm sure uh, someone may be looking at it for the first time is digesting this and processing uh, because there's, there's so much to do here. A um, couple points pop into my mind and I think they're important just to reiterate. So as a manager, as a supervisor of a fleet of boats, I can set those parameters that you described for the boat. I can say, hey, if this boat does over 30 knots in this particular area, let me know. I can set it for the operator too, right? Uh, I could say, hey, if Carl operates a boat over 30 knots, I need to know about it because Carl's been kind of a problem child and he's uh, he's pushing the limits here. And I want to, I want to be aware of that. And yeah. it also allows me to 
decide how I want to be alerted. So it can be just a standard email. But if I really want to know when Carl is pushing the envelope via text message, I can get that. So I could literally call Carl and say, okay, Carl, what's going on here? Why are you going 40 knots um, in this particular area? Correct. So there's a, there's a key part there, but that leads to an important part that we mentioned in our last conversation, but I think it's worth reiterating here. It can be used as a training tool. So I could pin those trips that you were talking about. So let me, I want to use this as a teaching moment for Carl, and I'm going to pin all those trips that, that he took. I'm going to look at them collectively and say, hey, let's just look at, look at your trips and see there's some consistency here. You're doing really good here. You're doing, in this particular instance, you operated at a high rate of speed in this shallow area here. Um, I can use it to say, this is why we've put this limitation on the platform operating in this particular area because I'll, I'll speak about Florida because that's where I live. You know, this is a manatee zone. This is an area where we have to reduce our speed because we don't want to obviously damage uh, or cause harm to these creatures, especially when our job is to protect them. So these, so I, I see it as a teaching tool as well. Yes, exactly. And, and, and you can, you can do exactly that. I mean, whether it be down to an area that you'd like to focus on and what speed should be covered there and, and what has been trending there, how have we performed there or, or taking into a, taking trips like this, individual trips and studying them in detail and going through them with operators to learn from them, uh, to understand why was it that we are getting these uh, these higher impacts on these on these parts here, for example, should we be dropping our speed and adapting our speed accordingly uh, in order to in order to reduce those impacts? Is there another route that we could take? And that's one actually feature worth mentioning that uh, will be later in the year, so not over the coming weeks, but but a little bit um, sort of later half of the year, uh, a solution for route optimization or route guidance. Uh, essentially from here, uh, being able to select point A to point B and having the system plot the route for you based on prevailing conditions and, and, and weather and weather forecast. So what is your smoothest route that you can go from A to B today? Um, and at what speed do you do that? And so using that as a planning planning application as well. And the idea there, of course, is that the uh, next logical step after being able to decide speed in the onboard system was we should also be able to decide on heading. But then we also then we needed to know what what is the route. And so there therein came this uh, this model that needed to optimize for the route. Yeah, I'm sure, especially as we go back again to something we talked about in our previous conversation about our workforce dynamics and challenges. And I have people that might be less experienced and new to the maritime environment, definitely new to operating my platforms. Being able to provide that type of guidance to them is, again, only helpful, not only to them as operators, but to me as a manager and to my organization to make sure that they're operating in the best way that they can to accomplish the mission, but doing it in a safe way they're limiting the impacts on the boat. They're limiting the stress on the boat and they're limiting the stress and impact on themselves. So that, yeah, that's yeah. an important part. What, what are, of all those things that you've just told us, what are the insurance companies most interested in? What, what do they look at? Because you've talked about in our last conversation how one of your customers as recently as today was talking about how uh, it had an impact on their insurance costs. What do they look for? What, what, what type of data are they most interested in? It depends on whom they're insuring. But for example, this insurance company is insuring uh, companies that take tourists out for rib boat rides mm -hmm. uh, in high speed boats. And those boats can be dangerous. They go, they reach high speeds. You can have 12 people uh, lined up in seats on those boats and, uh, and they can go up to 50 knots to go, you know, as close as possible 
the good thing with rib boats in, in this sort of uh, application is that they can get closer to the whale. They can, uh, they're smaller. Um, they can get closer to, uh, to the puffins or the seabirds that people want to see. But they're also pretty dangerous. And, and those impacts that are incurred on those boats are, are dangerous. So what they want to see is that is something being done to, to limit those impacts. Uh, what does what do these peak impacts over time look like? Is there is there any trend to to lowering them? Like is this consistently high or is there something being done? Is there a particular captain that is causing most of the peak impacts or or is it uh, unavoidable because of weather? Um, what do what do these impacts here? Well, not a good trip to pick, but very very low. This would be something that the insurance company would want to see. Just mm-hmm. uh, barely any impact. Right. But how how often are you are you uh, taking on impacts like that? Like, is this a regular thing? Like, impact frequency of zero is is well excellent. Just means that you're never exceeding that threshold at any point per nautical mile. But you might see something like zero point one, zero point two, zero point three. You're getting on average 0.3 impacts like that per nautical mile over your trip. Uh, what is your safety quality? How closely have you been tracking the, the uh, safety speed that the system is delivering? And then how are you using this information to improve? So you can compile a report saying, this is how we did. This is our snapshot of how we did last year. Now we can set some goals for next year. We want to... We want to increase our safety quality so that it exceeds 92%. Uh, we, want to, we want to see our peak impacts go below. Uh, you know, on, on average, our average peak impacts per trip have been hovering around 2.3G, but we want to get them below 2G. So you can set yourself qualitative but quantitative goals that are measurable and you can easily follow them. You can check on them every single week, every single month to make sure you're t- trending in the right direction. And by tagging the operators to those trips and to those boats, you know who you need to address, who you need to talk to, who, you need to, uh, who needs to do better, and who is doing well and who should be incentivized accordingly. And that's, that's what this insurance company wanted to see in particular. I listened to everything you just said about what the insurance company wanted to listen to. And what I pictured is myself as a supervisor or a manager or even an owner of a boat company and sitting down with one of my employees or one of my subordinates and going over those things that you just went over and saying, hey, Carl, over the last six months, I'm looking at your quality, your safety quality rating here. I'm looking at you your worst impact or what your average impact was and again i just see that as such a important management tool and teaching tool and that if there was something like oh let's say that you know your highest impact was 4g we can we can go way down into the weeds here and see where that happened and given the totality of circumstances at that moment that might have been unavoidable because of what you were trying to do, uh, rescue people in a surf zone or something like that. So uh, I really think that the power of this in using it to improve my overall workforce, aside from the details of, hey, we can save money in fuel. Hey, we can save money in boat maintenance hey, we can save money in the life cycle of this boat. Those are all good things and tangible, quantitative, like you said. But there's a qualitative one in the safety and well-being of my people. And to me, that is extremely valuable. It, it, it's a, to me, this is just Mark talking personally, that's first and foremost, and all the, all the mechanical stuff comes afterwards. If I can yeah. keep my people safe, if I can help to train them to be better operators, uh, that's first and foremost. And all this other stuff just happens to be a byproduct. So I, yeah. I, I just saw that. I, I literally was imagining a conversation with me doing the talking that you were doing and sitting down with a with a subordinate and talking about, hey, these are all the things you've done over the last quarter, last year, whatever it is. It, it seems to be such a valuable teaching tool. It seems also 
an opportunity to reward, like the system already has a way of me achieving that legendary status. Uh, I think I'm a legend in my head, but this documents it, right? This says, yeah, yeah over the course of time, Mark, you have truly been uh, beyond a master. You're, you're really a good example for the other officers to mirror. And I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity to other people about how this this can be used and used appropriately and can improve your performance as an individual, as a boat operator. So I think those I mean, are... They're, they're on that point, a uh, customer I spoke to this morning was talking about using the, the uh, fuel optimizing uh, model on board and incentivizing his operators to follow it by giving them a cut of the savings. Like for... For every trip you do, you you get a you know you get a few extra bucks, just if you manage to save. And and why why not like right. this, uh, like if you, if you're saving anyway, why not why not share it with those that are that are doing doing the job, right? And uh, let's go one step further from the insurance company to the recreational boater. All right, so we we talked about a tourist company um, in the public safety realm. Most, if not all, of the organizations are self-insured, if you will. They don't they don't necessarily carry insurance. But I'm sure the leaders that they report to really want to hear data like that and demonstrate how they've saved taxpayer dollars, that they yeah. have been allocated X amount of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, million dollars in fuel costs and or boat costs, and they've managed to come back at the end of the year reporting a savings of X percent. I'm sure that everybody is interested in that. But on a recreational boating side, if I'm an insurer, going back to what we talked about earlier, this influx of so many people getting into boating, which is a really good thing, but many of them don't have the depth of experience that we're talking about here. Giving or ma mandating, highly recommending that someone have this type of tool on that boat so that that insurance company can feel confident that Carl is operating within safety parameters that we recognize. Uh, gr we now grant Carl a lower insurance cost than he would have otherwise had to pay. I just think that's a that's an incentive both for the insurer, insured individual as well as the insurance company itself so i think that's a that's a big thing what about builders um we talked about what the insurance companies most be might be most interested in the builders what are they most interested in as we look at all this data what where, where does it help them one thing would be i mean trial data i mean uh when you build a new boat, you need to test that it's that it's uh, that it's to meet specifications, that it's uh, uh, that it's everything is in order before you deliver it. And for that, you need data. And then the more data you can get, the better. Um, and this can accumulate all of that data into one platform so you can see it as you are operating the boat. Mm. Um, that is one thing that like the as a first step for a builder would be valuable to have, mm -hmm. to have all your engine data, your, your motion data, your impact data, everything there in front of you, analyze it on the go and right after the trip is done. Uh, no need for data crunching or, or, or fetching that data from manually from the vessel itself. And then having that on, depends on, I guess, what kind of builder you are. Are you, are you building professional boats for law enforcement? Are you building uh, recreational boats? Are you building boats that are going to be used in boat clubs? But depending on depending on what what kind of boats you're building, uh, what kind of network you have around you, do you have a dealer network that might also be able to have that information? Do you want to fetch data from that dealer network so you can be monitoring the status of of your vessels? Here, more talking about equipment rather than you don't want to be spying on people. You want to be just making sure everything is. Uh, Everything's running smoothly. Are, are, how are your engines, the new engines you selected recently performing? Uh, how is the new, new hull shape that you just designed? How is that doing relative to the hull shapes that you've been, <laughs> that you've been uh, uh, using in the past? 
So there's a lot of information you can you can get out of it. And the more systems you have out there, the bigger the fleet, the more valuable the data, because the more points you have to compare to one another. That's a, that's a really important aspect of it. Is there a opportunity to be an anonymous aggregate? What I mean by that is, so let's say I'm a boat manufacturer. This came in my head, so let me let me think it out, and I may change my mind halfway through my sentence. But I, I'm either a boat builder or a manufacturer of recreational or commercial use platforms. And I want to collect to be able to generate and articulate how our boats operate in these particular environments. Is there a way for me to do that in such a way that doesn't infringe on the privacy uh, of other agencies, departments? Can I take it? Can I take it anonymously and protect their privacy rights? Uh, as a, I mean, as a user, we can set up the system so that depending on your sort of level of sensitivity, the system does not have to be collecting all data to the IMAS cloud. I mean, that's that's a, that's a feature that we built as an option that we that we built, uh, but it can be set up so that it just collects everything locally to the system on board, and we can set it up so that you manually have to go and fetch the data from the vessel. So that nothing leaves. Uh, so nobody can. There's no communication protocol in or out of the boat. It all has to be just done flash drive or, or or something similar, or sharing data only to a trusted Wi-Fi router or or a, or a local network via Ethernet that you approve and that the system recognizes, so that it recognizes nothing else other than this one particular router once it is in range of it or once it is connected to it. Uh, so there are ways to configure this, yeah. It, okay. it does not need to be pulled into, uh, into the cloud. Uh, and as a, as a, but as a user of the cloud though, of the cloud console, you are the owner of, of your data um, and you are the one with access to it and the one who can delete it if you don't want it there or ask that all data be deleted. Okay, that's an important point. I think it would be for some law enforcement agencies, uh, public safety organizations, I'm sure the confidentiality of that data or secureness of that transfer would be an important aspect. Well, uh, thank you, Carl, for spending the time to go over it and demonstrate what the tool looks like. I'm sure that it'll probably germinate some questions. Uh, at the end of this, we'll give some links both back to us, the National Maritime Law Enforcement Academy, if you have some specific questions, and directly to Carl if you want to reach out to him uh, and talk about how this might be used in your application. We look forward to continuing this conversation. I think the next thing we ought to do, Carl, is maybe get together a bunch of users and talk about how they're actually applying this and they can tell some real-life user experiences. Yeah, I think so, too. We're... we're uh... I talk a little bit less and I let others talk. I like that. <laughs> Everybody will like it if I talk less, so that'll be good too. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. We look forward to talking to you the next time. Thank you very much.